Hi there, welcome to part one of three of our body photo fitting series. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do body photo fitting for characters that have really short limbs like those from South Park. For this example I'm going to use a stuffed animal hippo. First I have to go to the actor creator and select my image. I've used the PNG image here with a transparent background, so when I proceed to the masking section, the background is already masked out. Now on to the next step which is setting the basic shape of the character. I want to follow the matte shape guide image on the top right, so I can just place the markers in the appropriate areas according to the reference image. Once that's finished, I'll move on to the next step which is to rig the skeleton. Here I want to place a white marker on each joint area. Because this character has stubby arms and feet with no real joints, what I need to do here is place the markers that are normally reserved for the wrists and move them outside the actor material area. This will allow for no elbow or knee rotation. The next step is detailed photo fitting. Here I'm going to encompass all of the actor material within the areas surrounding the markers. Any area that is left out of these indicators will not be included in the final product. I can adjust the hip joints here together because the mirror option is selected. If I toggle the mirror option off, then I can adjust one at a time. I'll start on the left leg here to give you an example. The hip joint is basically where the foot is going to rotate around, so I'll position that around where I imagine the hippo's hip would be. Then I'll move down to the foot and increase the range of the marker area to encompass all of the foot material. You can do this by clicking inside the marker area and clicking and dragging to increase or decrease the size. I'm going to skip ahead a bit here to the torso. As you can see I can drag the markers to increase the area of the body. I also want to position the shoulders where they normally would be and resize them to fit the arm size. The arms are the same thing. Just make sure all the material is encompassed by the marker areas. When it comes to the head, you need to follow the reference image on the right hand side that will show you where to place key indicators for the neck as well as the top and the bottom of the head. As always, make sure your actor material is encompassed, then select process. We're now in the body calibration area where you can check for material overlap in your sections. And as you can see, when I raise the arms here, there's a lot of it. I can fix that here in the body calibration window, but I'm going to use the character composer to do it later. I'll just save the body fitting file for now, and then go back and enter the character composer. You'll be prompted to continue to face fitting, but for now I'll just add my new character into my custom library by selecting the add button in the content manager to the right, then enter the character composer. The first thing I need to do here is delete the body parts my stubby character doesn't have. Those were the marker sections that were outside the actor material area in the previous steps that we don't need. I'll start by deleting the left arm and forearm as this character will only have a single arm section. I can continue to the right side and do the same thing. Then I'll move on to the legs. I can delete the left and right feet and calves as my character really only has circles for feet. The lower torso can also be deleted as he won't really have any waist movement. So in the end, my character will only have 6 body parts. Now I'm going to select the head and launch it in Photoshop to do some more detailed editing. What I want to do here is mask out the head from the upper shoulders. I'm going to use the pen tool to select the neck area first. Make sure that you have paths selected instead of shape layers at the top, otherwise you'll just draw a shape over your character's neck. After I've outlined the area, I'll make it into a selection and give it a one pixel feather to make it a bit cleaner and more natural. Then I'll delete the selected area and go up to save my body part. Once that's done, Animator will automatically update with a newer, cleaner head that I can test by rotating around. I'll do it one more time for the left arm. This one's a bit different because it contains material from the head and the torso due to overlap when defining body material areas. I'm going to run the same procedure here. First use the pen tool to select the area, then feather your selection, then delete that area. Now you'll notice I still have a bit of the head in there, so what I want to do now is use the clone stamp tool to make this into one neat looking arm. I'll hold alt to select the reference area first, then proceed to even out the looks of my arm. If you want, you can use the healing brush or other tools as well. 
if you want to go into more detail, but for me, I think I'll just go ahead and save the arm. Now back in the composer, you can see there is no more overlap for that part. I'll skip over to the torso part. Here I want to crop the torso area into an outline of what I think the hippo's body should look like. Then use the clone stamp tool again like you see me doing here to just make one big body. Now I've completed the right arm as well, but it doesn't look proper with the arms in front of the face. If I go to the scene manager to the right, I can rearrange the order of the limbs so that the face is in front of all the other body parts. I just need to select the move down icon and the body part will move down in the hierarchy. Last but not least, I'll move down to the feet. Here I don't really need to use the clone stamp tool, I just need to cut out the overlapping area so that I have two little round feet for my stuffed hippo. Remember to save your file before exiting back to the composer. Now back in the character composer we can see that all the body parts have been masked and rearranged. There are various calibration templates you can use to test the movements of your character. I'll just select the foot one so you can see all the results of the masking. And that's it. That's how you take any toy or character image and turn them into easily animatable characters in Crazy Talk Animator. Go out and try it for yourself.